which from our birth over and around us lies Lord of all to thee we raise this our grateful hymn of praise for the beauty of the day and of the night hill and veil tree and flower sun and moon and stars of light Lord of all to thee we raise this our great joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, pleasures pure and undefiled, Lord of all, to we raise this our grateful hymn of praise for the beauty and the honor we your children sing Hello and welcome to our Parables Worship Service. We are in spring right now. It's the merry month of May and we are so glad that you are here. My name is Autumn Toussaint and I'm part of the music ministry and the special needs ministry here at Wayzata Community Church. And if you are visiting with us today or you're here every single week, welcome. Right now is when we grab an instrument or a pot and a pan or just use your hands and let's march around the room and sing together. When the saints go marching in, you guys ready? Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. This is the day, this is the day. Joy. 
the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now let's continue now as we welcome our friend Allie Henley leading us in our opening prayer. Hi, parables. It's Allie. And I want to introduce you to the prayer of good courage. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong yes Jesus loves me the response of prayer with me. Gracious God, we come to you with deep gratitude for the new beginnings that the season of spring brings to our lives. Lord, please pay attention to our prayers. We are grateful for the truth that even when we stop working for you, you never stop working for us. Lord, please pay attention to our prayers. Keep us grateful for the wisdom and humility that comes from the hardships we endure. Lord, please pay attention to our prayers. Thank you for the comfort of knowing that you walk with and through us every day of our lives, that we are never alone. Lord, please pay attention to our prayers. Amen. Good morning. Today, we are going to talk about Matthew 23, verse 37. It's Jesus' lament over the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he says, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. Well, happy Mother's Day. This is a day to honor our mothers and a time to be honored if we are mothers. Flowers and brunch and cards and Hallmark gifts, oh, those are the usual fare, right? It can be a glorious day of gratitude for many of us, but not for all of us. So, for some of us, this day, can be pretty darn challenging. 
Some of us are grieving the raw and recent loss of our mothers. Some of us ache from decades of that loss. Some of us grieve becoming mothers. Some of us grieve not becoming mothers or grieve the way we did or didn't mother. Some of us still physically have our mothers, but we've lost the relationship due to, oh, dementia and Alzheimer's and maybe just even basic estrangement. And some of us may never have even met our biological mothers. Oh dear, this is a complicated holiday. But today I want to flip the script a bit and look at Mother's Day differently, through a different lens. I want to consider Mother's Day with mother as a verb, not a noun. To mother as an action, as a way of showing up, a way of loving and caring for one another with reckless abandon. Today, I propose that we rename this holiday Happy Mothering Day. Did you hear the beautiful scripture I just read? Here, Jesus does exactly that. He audaciously flips the script and mothers Jerusalem. Instead of likening himself to some big macho king rattling a sword, to get his audience attention, he compares himself to a lowly female barnyard animal, you guys, a mother hen sheltering her babies. Very strange, huh? Or maybe not. Have you ever watched a mother hen closely? I watched it on YouTube and I gotta tell you, it was fascinating. Hens have a remarkable gift for mothering, they are deeply nurturing to their young, and they have an uncanny sense of danger, diligently keeping out a sharp eye for the safety of their chicks. They hover, 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 right? They ensure protection of the innocent from harm. You know the phrase, you're acting like a mother hen. It might surprise you to know that a nurturing metaphor for the divine, like the mother hen, was not a new idea for Jesus. In his early studies of the Torah, Jesus heard God described in protective and nurturing terms in Deuteronomy, in the book of Ruth, the Psalms, and in Isaiah. And in the Gospel of John, when Jesus is telling his disciples he's soon going to be leaving them, he says that God will send them another Paraclete. Paraclete. It's a small Greek word that packs a punch of big meaning. Here Jesus is telling them, as he did, the Holy Spirit will show up as a counselor and an advisor and a protector and an advocate and a helper and a comforter. That's what a paraclete is. This strange Greek word, paraclete, actually translates to mean in English, called to one's side. Isn't that lovely? The Holy Spirit sounds an awful lot like a mother hen to me, coming alongside its beloveds. And that's what I hope to celebrate with you today. Mother as a verb. The act of mothering. Have you ever heard the story called The Black Telephone? Written by Paul Villard, it was published back in 1966 in Reader's Digest Ma magazine. Guys, I am going way back now. Do you remember that? That little bitty magazine that came out every week? It's old and it's corny, but it's true and it's pertinent today. And if you're as old as me, you're going to remember dialing 411. Paul writes, when I was quite young, my family had one of the first telephones in our neighborhood. And early on, I learned that somewhere in that wonderful device lived an amazing person. Her name was Information Please. And there was nothing she didn't know. My mother could call her at any time of day and get anybody's number anywhere in the world. And if our clocks broke down, she knew the correct time 
every single time we call. My first experience with this genie in the receiver came when I was alone in my house. I was amusing myself at the tool bench and boom, I hit the hammer onto my finger and whoa, did that hurt. And I paced around the house, putting my finger in my mouth. It was throbbing, it was horrible. And then I saw it, that telephone. And I ran to the phone, I picked it up and I said, information please. And there was her voice. I yelled out, I hurt my finger. And she says, isn't your mother home? Nobody's home but me. I blubbered. Are you bleeding, she asked. No, it's bruised. I hit my finger with a hammer. Can you, can you open the ice box? I said I could. Then chip off a piece of ice and hold it on that finger. That will stop the hurt. You'll be all right. After that, I called information please for everything. I asked for help on geography and she told me where Philadelphia was. And I called her to ask, how do I spell fix? And then she helped me when I got stumped in math and told me that the pet chipmunk I had found in the park would eat fruits and nuts. And when my pet canary Petey died, I immediately called information please because I was crushed. I said, why is it that birds should sing so beautifully and bring such joy only to end as a heap of feathers, feet up in the bottom of a cage? And she said, oh, so quietly, Paul, always remember that there are other worlds to sing in. And somehow, I felt better. All this took place in a town in the Pacific Northwest. When I was nine, we moved out of the state and all the way to Boston, and I missed my dear friend terribly. And as I grew into my teens, her memory never quite left me. In my moments of doubt, I would recall the sense of security I would have from the gift information, please. After college, I was in Seattle for a short stop between flights, and I took a chance, and I dialed my hometown operator, and I said, information, please. I didn't recognize the voice. I told the new operator my story, and she asked, is your name Paul? And I said, yes. She said, Sally told me all about you. I'm sorry to tell you that she died just a few weeks ago. But she asked me if you ever reached out to give you this message. She said to always remember that there are other worlds to sing in. She said you would know what that means. Hmm. Yes, indeed. I knew. You see, friends, information please was more than a simple switchboard operator. Just like Jesus and just like the Holy Spirit, she protected and she counseled and she loved and she nurtured. She was a woman who mothered souls. So here's the million dollar question today. Who mothers your soul? If you still have your mother and she does this for you, oh my, today of all days, count your blessings. But if for whatever reason you no longer have that, who mothers you? Who mothers you as a verb? Who is your information, please, your mother hen, your paraclete? Who whispers to you that there are other worlds to sing in when you are on your knees and your heart is breaking? That's what this day is all about. I lost my mother 27 years ago this past November, and that has left a gigantic hole that has been awfully hard to fill. But I have been blessed to have a lot of mothering in those tender years in her absence. I recall a friend in, named Kim in Dallas who brought me brownies on Mother's Day when I was alone in the pediatric ICU with JJ. She took time out of her celebration of Mother's Day to mother me when nobody else even thought about it. 
And when Ryan was born two months after my mother died, my mother-in-law stepped in to mother me like crazy with her big bear hugs of love. And when JJ was critically ill for a number of years, my Texas church mothered me mothered me. And when my dad was ailing, some dear old friends mothered me mightily with their blood, sweat, and their tears. And when my father-in-law died just a few years ago, and I was asked to officiate his service at the same time I was caring for JJ after a very serious uh, neck operation, a new friend offered to join me in Texas and promised to stay within, and I quote, six feet of you at all times, unquote. I was deeply mothered. And late one night a few years ago when nobody else could really understand my pain, my then 25-year-old son Ryan on the phone, 3,000 miles away, mothered me with such tenderness, it still takes my breath away. And throughout my life, my beloved aunt and godmother mothered me in the stark, empty places where my mother's absence loomed. And finally, after 35 years of marriage, Chris and I are beginning to learn the tender skill of mothering one another each and every day. Guys, this is no easy task, I got to tell you, but it is a beautiful gift. And you, you, the Parables community, have mothered me and you've mothered each other for eight stinking years, more than I could ever say. And for that gift, I am forever grateful. So who mothers your soul? And who do you offer this gift to? Because, you see, mothering is a bigger job than one person alone can do and do well. Life can be long and challenges are many, and no single human being is capable of such a feat. And guess what? This mothering gig, it is an equal opportunity work to do. So guys, you're not off the hook. Mothering comes in all shapes and sizes and in gender. So today, today of all days, I want to invite each of you to lean deeply into this question and acknowledge and give thanks to all the crazy mothering you've gotten from the most unlikely and surprising places in your life. And how does that mothering show up? How does it touch your soul? And where do you do it for others? That's the true meaning of this day, of Mother's Day. May we each be blessed with this kind of mother hen love wherever and whoever it comes from. Happy Mothering Day, my friends. Amen. When I am a wasteland, you are the water. When I am a winter, you are the fire that burns. When I am a the sun arise when I am a desert you are the river that turns to find me like a whisper 
breaking the silence You say there's a treasure You look till you find it You search To find me What have I done to deserve love like this? What have I done to deserve love like this? I cannot earn what you so freely give. What have Will you please pray with me? Oh, Holy One, we come on this day with ambivalence. We come on this day with joy and broken hearts and missed opportunities and hurt and celebration all wrapped in one messy blob. And so we come to you on our knees asking us, wherever we are, meet us there. Meet us there and hold us there and mother us there. Help us to see that mother is so much more than one single role or one single person. It is a calling that each of us are asked to do, not just for others, but good grief for ourselves. How do we mother ourselves? So we ask in these days, help us to do that. Help us to bust open the definition, the, the narrow definition that we hold for mothering. And let's make it big and bold and beautiful. We ask all of this in your sweet son's name and in the words that he taught us in how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So guys, it is time for the Holy Communion. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, we know that his friends were all around him and he took his Ritz cracker and he held it over his head and he broke it in two and he gave it to his friends and he said, friends, take this and eat. This is the bread of life broken for you in great love as often as you eat of it. Remember me. And after the supper had ended, Jesus took the cup and he filled it with wine 
and he took a sip and he gave it to his friends and he said, take and drink. This is the cup of forgiveness poured out for you in great love. And as often as you drink of this, remember me. So friends, these are God's gifts for all of God's people. And here is the mother hen, Jesus, the mother hen, inviting us to come because the table is ready. Dear God, we thank you for our family. We thank you for our friends. Thank you for making each of us who we are and thank you for loving us always. Amen. Amen and amen. And now let's all sing our blessing song together. Lord bless us and keep us. Lord bless us and keep us. Make your face to shine upon us. Raise your us peace, peace as we begin a new week, peace as we walk into this world day by day. Always remember that Christ goes before you, walks beside you, and lives within you. So let that light shine. And let's sing about that light right now. This little light of mine, we're going to let it shine. You ready? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. We'll see you soon.